Hello and welcome back to our English speaking viewers. It is time once again for our English News Edition, which we have Monday through Saturday at 6 p.m. right here on Aura News. And as usual, I'm Daniel Cook, your host. In today's news, the High Court has thrown out the case against the socialist MPs Pierin Indreu and Arben Ndoka, who were accused of striking the Democratic MP Gent Strazimiri in the hallway of the parliamentary building. In a press release, the court explained that the issue never should have been brought to the court because it does not fall under the jurisdiction of criminal justice. The following statement was made. The use of offensive words and expressions, as well as other violent actions by MPs, which affect the normal activity and the authority of the assembly, the person and dignity of a deputy, etc., which are committed during parliamentary activities or within the premises of the assembly, constitute the exceeding of parliamentary freedom. If the offenses do not bring other serious consequences under the law, they must be tried and punished by the assembly. After the session, the socialist MP Pierin Indreu apologized for his temper, but he underlined that the events of July 10, 2014, did not constitute a legal reason for criminal charges. He said, I feel sorry for those who organized this whole story. The country has more serious problems to deal with. This is something that happens all around the world. The socialist MP said that there are efforts being made to connect him with crime, but he stated that they will find no such connections. The Democratic chairman, Lul Zimbasha, reacted to the ruling, saying that this is bad news for the democracy of the Albanian parliament. The Democratic MP, Edward Halimi, made the statement that the ruling was truly orchestrated by Edi Rama. The German Interior Ministry has publicized the number of Albanian asylum seekers during the month of May. According to the data, the number of Albanians who have asked for asylum in Germany in the month of May is 4,992, while in April the number was 4,794 and in March 3,020. The number of asylum requests in May increased by over 50 percent since the previous month. According to the German Interior Ministry, the reasons that the Albanians want to leave their own country are poverty and unemployment. The problem is ongoing despite the efforts of the government to stop it by making many public announcements and adding checks at the border points. The government has also called the citizens not to leave their country because they will be deported back to Albania, as the German laws do not accept asylum requests from Albanians. Germany considers Albania to be a free and safe country, and they do not offer political or economic asylum to Albanians. The German ambassador to our country, Mr. Hoffman, has publicly declared several times that Albania is not on the list of problematic countries, and for this reason, the Albanians are not given asylum. The ambassador has also implored the citizens not to fall prey to scams, reminding them that everyone who has already fled to Germany is going to be sent back home again. According to the German data for May, Syria is listed in the first place with 5,100 asylum requests. Albania is second, Serbia is in third place with 1,990 uh, 1, asylum requests, and Kosovo is in the fourth place with 1,947 asylum requests. In total, there have been about 26,000 asylum requests, twice as many as there were a year ago. 10,732 applications came from the Western Balkan countries, including Albania, Bosnia, Kosovo, Macedonia, Montenegro, and Serbia. Just a few days before the local elections, the U.S. Ambassador Donald Liu visited the city of Korcha for the very first time. There he reiterated his call not to vote for candidates with criminal records. Mr. Liu met with a group of Korcha students and encouraged them to use their voting power. Albania is one of the countries with the youngest average age in Europe, he said, only 30 years old. This is a country in which the youth possess the power. You have the power to choose your leaders and the power to change the entire political system. You have the power to reject the incriminated, reject the buying of votes, and reject the angry political rhetoric. But you have this power only if you vote, said Mr. Liu. There is an expression in America, he continued, do not complain if you do not vote. We all like to complain about our leaders, but you have the power to choose your leaders. Do not sell your votes, do not listen to the angry political rhetoric, and do not forget to vote on election day, said the ambassador to the youth of Korcha.
The Coalition for Free and Democratic Elections has published an interim report on the electoral process so far. The report states that the political parties are pressuring the administration to become part of the electoral activities. The observers denounced any employees of the public administration who have joined the electoral campaigns during their working hours. According to the report, the campaigning has been more focused on candidates for mayor and just a little emphasis on the candidates for city council. About these candidates, the citizens are receiving very little information. The report praises the decision-making of the CEC, stating that it is transparent and that the updates are given in real time. The report does not say the same about 25 local election commissions, which hold their meetings behind closed doors with no cameras and no press allowed. The Education Commission discussed the new bill on higher education today, which, if passed, will transform the public universities into independent public universities. The director of the public universities are accusing the government of preparing the bill based upon its own interests and at the request of the private universities. The Democratic MP Astrid Valiai, a director of a private university, said that this law will, in fact, favor the private universities. Some of the other private university directors welcomed the initiative, but others were against it because the universities will be seen as independent even though they will benefit from the state budget. Before the commission began, a group of students from the public universities held a protest against the bill. Photos have since been published by some of the students on their social networks with claims that they were taken to the police department. June 10th marks the 137th anniversary of the Albanian League of Prizren, and the family of the national hero, Isa Boletini, chose this day to bury him in his hometown of Mitrovic. To honor the national martyr, the high officials of Kosovo and Albania organized a ceremony in which the Kosovo Prime Minister, Isa Mustafa, the Koso Kosovo Assembly Speaker, Kadri Viseli, and the Albanian President, Bujar Nishani, were in attendance. President Nishani had this to say, Today we say to Isa Bolatini that the Albanians have two democratic and free countries. This speech I dedicate to him. Isa Bolatini is the martyr of the Albanians. Prime Minister Mustafa spoke as well. The life of Isa Bolatini has been an inspiration to our generations. He is the martyr of Kosovo and he must be respected by all Albanians. He is a symbol of the battle for universal human freedom, said Mr. Mustafa. A few weeks ago, along with Prime Minister Eddie Rama, the Kosovar Foreign Minister, Hasim Tachi, declared that the body of Isa Bolatini will be reburied in Vlora. Initially, his family agreed to this, but they later withdrew in favor of burying him in his hometown. That is the end of our edition for today. Thank you so much for choosing Aura News as your source for daily news updates in English. Have a great night and see you tomorrow.